Hi, I'm Matt Hugey, and I'm a naval architect here at Mastercraft Boat Company. Today we're going to show you guys how to properly align a Mastercraft engine and go through all the steps required to do so. In order to perform a successful engine alignment, it's crucial that you have the right tools. The tool set you'll need to perform this job are as follows. You need some open end wrenches, 5 8 and 9 16 You need sockets, 3 quarter inch for the trunnion bolt, 5 8 for your coupler bolts, and then the top bolts, the top screws on your transmission motor mounts require 7 16 In order to get the, the back motor mounts, it's an inch and an eighth jam nut, Works best if you actually have a socket that'll fit that and an actual wrench. Uh, it can also be done with crescent wrenches and you want to have a smaller wrench on hand uh, for turning those when you're actually aligning them. Uh, you want a torque wrench at the end for checking your uh, the 5 8 bolts on your coupler and some sort of persuader pry bar to move the engine over if you need to move it side to side with the trunnion bolts. Uh, an old prop shaft worked uh, in carpet here works very well, and it's uh, about all you need. What item I always check for ahead of time is to make sure that the prop shaft is not bound in the shaft log or on the strut. Simply accomplished by just spinning the propeller, making sure that it's free to move. In order to check the shaft log, you can use a medium sized zip tie, insert it around the, the shaft and just move it, around, move it around the actual shaft and make sure that it, it has enough clearance on both sides to get through. That way you can make sure the shaft's not binding on the shaft block. When checking the alignment of the shaft log in the shaft is take a medium sized zip tie work it all the way around the shaft log in the shaft to make sure it doesn't bind and then once you're clear of that you can move on to the inside and aligning the actual motor one of the first things you want to do when aligning the engine is get as much access as possible to it we removed the transmission cover, backed off the hatch for additional access, and we removed the closeouts. The next step is going to be removing the coupler and taking off all the bolts here. It's easiest to get at the bolts if you rotate the coupler to expose the bolts on the side that you want to get at. Once you initially get them loose, get them off with your fingers. Okay. Now your coupler, easily pull out the coupler. And just notice how it wants to hang there with it out. The initial alignment check on this one appears to be level between the between the two faces. The initial spin, make sure nothing's bound. And then gently push it back in and set it in the inside the flange there. When checking alignment, the goal for aligning your Elmore engine is to get the coupler alignment within two thousandths. We can start first with a three or four thousandths uh, feeler gauge to do the initial check around your coupler face. Take your feeler gauge, to insert it between the, between the two flanges of the transmission and your prop shaft, and try to work it around the coupler and see where, see where it binds. So on this engine, 
we're binding on the top up here. You cannot move the, the 3 thousandths gauge any further up on the top, but yet I can completely remove it around the bottom. And stopping a little short over here on the starboard side. So what that means is that the portion from 9 o'clock up to about 1 o'clock on the coupler face is tighter than on the bottom. So we're, we're going to have to remove, loosen up motor mounts and change the angle of the engine. Now that we've checked the alignment on the coupler shaft, we know that the engine has to move. Now understanding how the engine moves and when you move a motor mount to how that corresponds to the face of the coupler and what that does to the alignment is it's kind of a science and an art. When you move when you move this motor mount up, if this part of the engine comes up, that's going to translate to a tighter a tighter fit at the top of the coupler and it's going to increase the gap and increase the clearance at the bottom of the coupler. It will also have an effect of angling the engine when one of these moves when one side moves more than the other side. So it will decrease the clearance on the face of the coupler around the 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock area. And it will, in turn, increase the clearance down by the 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock area of the coupler. Work that either. It's usually easiest to get at the top of the bolt. Uh, in certain situations, you won't be able to fit an entire depot socket over the top of the motor mount. In that case, you'll have to use the box stand or the crescent wrench. Okay, when loosening the transmission motor mount bolts and the jam nuts, we have two different methods of doing it. Starting in 2014, both motor mounts have double jam nuts. That'll be a jam nut on top of the trunnion as well as a jam nut on the bottom for a little bit easier access because these are relatively difficult to get at. For the pre-2014 boats, the easiest way to loosen this jam nut is initially to back off on the top bolt here And then that will move, that will make this nut finger tight and, back, and backs it off the trunnion so you can now make your adjustments. On the 2014s, you have a little easier access to the bolt, to the jam nut on the bottom, and you can break it loose with an inch and an eighth wrench for a tighter fit, that, for the tight fit. Aligning the motor, in some situations you're going to need to move the motor side to side. It could be both the front mounts and the rear mounts have to move, and the whole engine has to move this way or this way. That is accomplished by loosening your trunnion bolts and moving the, moving the trunnions. It requires a three-quarter inch ratchet. Down here on both sides, break it loose on both ends and use, and you need to use some sort of a pry bar. In this situation, an old propeller shaft covered in carpet works very well for this. Simply insert it on a firm area where you're not going to scratch anything between the motor mounts there and the side of the hull. And you can pry with it in any fashion you need. Sometimes a little longer bar works and you align the motor properly that way. We've already loosened the top jam nut. When actually moving the motor, it's easier to use a smaller crescent wrench to get in there as far as your clearances go. 
We know that because of the face of the, the way the face of the coupler is sitting against the transmission, we know that this part of the motor has to go down. That's going to translate into shoring up the gap on the bottom of the coupler and decreasing that clearance and increasing the clearance on the top of the coupler towards the starboard side of the boat. Depending on how far the motor has to move, it's best to just do small increments at a time and then recheck your alignment. We've got a total of about one turn taken out there. We'll go back and check it at the coupler face. Let's recheck our alignment and see what we've done. The best way to recheck it is pull the shaft out again, have it loose, make sure it's sitting in a level inside the coupler, set it back in there, make sure there's a nice tight, tight fit, start with your three thousandths feeler gauge, we've got tight clearance all the way around on this side, Check the bottom, which we were trying to narrow the gap up. And we've got a tight fit on the surface all the way around now. Next step is to rotate the coupler 180 degrees. Maintain that that's a still a tight fit in there, and recheck. Still a good fit, 3 thousandths barely fits in on the corner of each. You can move to 2 thousandths as well to get a little tighter alignment, but 3 thousandths is more than acceptable. Now that we have the engine aligned, we need to tighten down all of our motor mounts. The first step is always to tighten down your transmission mounts. This can be accomplished when it has the single jam nut by getting the top jam nut as, pos as tight as you possibly can. It can be a difficult fit with, the with different wrenches at times. And then once it's complete, as tight as you can get it, come up here on your top, on your top bolt and you can snug it up using this without changing the alignment at all. Next, move up to your rear mounts. Once you have your transmission mounts tightened, move to your rear mounts. Get the bolts tight on the support. And tighten up. It's key to get these as tight as you possibly can so the vibrations and everything don't get it loose. Okay. Once you have the top nut tightened, you can also try to tighten the bottom jam nut just a little bit. It's just secure just so you know that it's completely tight. <clears throat> now that you have everything tight, go back and check everything with your torque wrench. 
Torque spec is 25 to 30 foot pounds. Okay, now you've just performed a successful engine alignment. The one more thing I would do is go out there and start your check over again with the propeller. Make sure nothing is bound up. It should be, it should be perfect because you checked it there at the coupler. And you can also go and check your shaft log one more time. But besides that, you're ready to put your closeouts in, put your transmission cover back on, and you're good to go. This engine had 27 hours on it, so it's, we recommend at least at the 10 or 20 hour mark that you, you perform an engine alignment. Um, it went a little over, but you know, it wasn't in too bad a shape. You can also reference the Mastercraft Drivetrain 101 manual. This has a written step-by-step -step instruction on how to perform an engine alignment. Thanks for your time.